Hi, I'm Jock Whittlesey. I'm the Environment Counselor at the American Embassy in London, and from December 7th through the 18th, I was part of the U.S. delegation to COP15, the Conference of the Parties of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change that was meeting in Copenhagen. I've just returned to London and thought I'd take a minute to talk to you about my impressions of the meeting. The overriding impression that I got was that it was enormous. There was so much going on that it was very difficult to keep track of. Uh, they would allow 15,000 people into the Bella Center in Copenhagen, which is where the meeting was taking place, but over 40,000 people registered. So there were sometimes huge lines of people outside trying to come in and get a badge to participate in the meetings. I think that's an important point, that there was not just governmental participation, but also a lot of non-governmental organizations and businesses as well participating in the meeting. The United States made a big effort during COP15 to do public outreach. That included not only trying to m meet and talk to other governmental officials, but also non-governmental organizations and businesses about what the United States is doing on climate change. We did that at a small pavilion called the U.S. Center, which was located in the Bella Center and was open to anyone who was inside. There we had uh, cabinet members and also scientific officials from the U.S. government talking about their work and about U.S. government programs on climate change. So every day there was not only a senior government official like a cabinet member or other senior person talking about uh, high-level programs, but also very experienced scientists talking about their work to show that the U.S. is heavily engaged on the work of understanding and trying to fight climate change. There are three parts of the Copenhagen Accord that are critical for us. One is mitigation, getting countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. The second part is transparency, being able to verify and understand what each country is doing on climate change. And the third critical part of the agreement is on financing, how much money is going to be put into fighting climate change and how that money is going to be spent. So the Copenhagen Accord made significant progress by putting those three pieces together into a framework that all of the uh, countries that signed the accord can agree to. Copenhagen was an incredible experience because so many world leaders came at the end. They started arriving and talking with each other on Thursday, but when President Obama arrived on Friday the 18th of December, he played a unique role in being able to bring together the critical world leaders who were able to agree on the Copenhagen Accord, which has these three components of mitigation, finance, and transparency. I'm convinced that without President Obama's personal participation in this process, we wouldn't have any agreement at all. So from that standpoint, having a nice, solid Copenhagen Accord gives us a framework for moving forward, starting to fight climate change right away, rather than continuing to have legalistic uh, negotiations that don't produce any results for years and years. Mm -hmm.